back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about the Hey guys, so I am here today actually to review an entire series for once because I recently reread the first two and finally finished up a series which is called The Devabad Trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. I first read the very first one in this in 2018 when I think it was fairly new out and then I read the second one not long after and then the third one I don't think was actually out at the time so I didn't read it and then I kind of just forgot about it because I don't own them in physical edition, I've always audiobooked or kindled them so I completely forgot about them and then for my book club we actually decided to read the first one as part of the book club that I'm in, the sci-fi and fantasy one and I remembered how much I loved this book series and I realised I hadn't finished it and I really wanted to. So I actually reread the first for the book club and had a great time. Then I reread the second one just because I wanted to get on to the third one and refresh myself of where everything ended. Because it had been a while, a good few years, and I wanted to get back into it. So the first book in this series is called City of Brass. And like I say, I originally read this in 2018. But I really, really enjoyed returning to the world. And actually, I think I probably enjoyed it even more on a reread because I knew where the story was going. So obviously, I didn't have that um, anticipation. But seeing the way that the author plotted up to that point was really, really cool. And I really enjoyed getting to see behind the scenes of uh, this world in general. So we are following a young girl who is called Nari and Nari lives in um, Cairo in Egypt um, way back in this sort of ancient time and she lives in a time where magic is not something that is believed in by many people at all but actually she does have a inkling that magic exists because she has magic of her own. Although she doesn't understand it, she never kind of got trained in her magic and she's actually been an orphan for most of her life so doesn't remember any of her history or her family and she just kind of made her way as a bit of a street child for a long time. But the magic that she has is really interesting magic. It's actually twofold. One of the magic sides that she can do is healing and she has a very, very talented knack or ability for healing people um, without necessarily having medical training. She just feels how to heal people and it's something she's always been able to do. Um, and obviously it's a very incredibly wonderful talent, but she lives in a time where women are not really permitted to be physicians or doctors and so she knows that she has to keep it secret, the abilities that she has. She can't go and get proper medical training and become a physician. And she's pretty upset about this, but she actually befriends an apothecary and she works with him and she kind of has a good life going for someone of her age and her skill in Egypt at this time. Um, her life is not bad and she's quite pleased with how she gets by. She's also a bit of a street thief, so you know, when she's not conning people, she is stealing and she's a pretty fun character and easy to root to. Um, she feels a little bit like Aladdin from the Disney film in my head, but she's quite quick and clever and witty as well. The other part of her magic is to do with languages. Any language that she hears, she can immediately speak, which honestly sounds like one of the coolest powers in the world, because what an amazing skill that would be to just know the language without having to learn it, because languages are really difficult. Um, I would love that skill. I mean, the healing one is awesome too, but yeah, the language one just seems really cool. So I really like her magic and um, she keeps it very secret. Again, this is not something she talks to people about because she knows that they will judge her and she doesn't really have a long term plan. She just kind of thinks her life is going to carry on fairly as it is. But one day she gets involved in a kind of demon exorcism style thing where a family have come to her because they believe that her their daughter has been inhabited by a spirit and she is trying to vanquish it. And she kind of sets up this big um charade and she thinks it's going to just kind of be a bit of a laugh and she does all this ritual and she kind of gets inspired in the moment to start singing and start ritual um and to start chanting and actually it turns out there is something inhabiting this girl and she frees it and that is the start of her life crumbling because from that point onwards she is being chased hounded she is being picked up by people who are magical and she is being brought into a completely new world of Devabad. 
and Devabad is this world of genies and gin and magic and mayhem. It is entirely magical, it's all crafted from magic and it's this really rich kind of culture and history of the gin. And she knows nothing about this because obviously the jinn keep themselves very hidden from humans and cut off from humans. And this place is very far away from Cairo, her home. And she ends up getting there with the help of one of the jinn who is called Dara Yuvahesh, also known as Dara. Um, and he's a really interesting, tricky character over the course of the whole series. So I really liked that they kind of have a relationship right from the start and it grows slowly and steadily into more. Um, but then there's also a lot of tumult in their relationship. And when she gets embroiled in the politics of Devabad, which happens very quickly, things start to go very wrong for her and for Dara and just for their life and what on earth Devabad is, the culture, the heritage, everything is thrown into her head and she doesn't really get time to settle in and she's just kind of thrust into this magical world. And that's where we really kind of see the story take off. The other main character that we have is Prince Ali, who honestly, I just, I, maybe this is where the Aladdin association is coming from, but the Prince Ali, I could only think of the Prince Ali, fabulous Ali Ababwa. Like that song was in my head 24 seven when I was reading Prince Ali all the time. But anyway, that aside, I really enjoy Ali as a character. He is the younger son of the person in charge, and therefore he is not expected to rule, but he's also the one who is the most caring. He really cares about the people who are within his city, and he notices that a lot of the people within his city, called the Shafit, um, are looked down upon, and they are really kind of hounded by some of the jinn and the devas, and they don't like these people very much, and they just kind of pick on them, and they get the worst things in life. And he's really a loving, caring individual, so he does what he can to try and help them. But obviously he is also a very shielded prince who doesn't quite understand the realities of the world as much as he thinks. And he has a lot of surprises along the way about what he's helping and what he's doing and funding. And yeah, lots of things take him by surprise with how he is kind of reacting in the world. Um, a lot of things take him very much by surprise by what is going on around him, what is being sanctioned by his father in particular, who is the ruler of Doverbad, and just generally, you know, how people are treating one another behind closed doors, because he doesn't see a lot being a prince, and it's only when his eyes get opened to the trials and tribulations of the Shafir and the people in his district that he really starts to realise that things are not working well in Devabad. And eventually, uh, once Nari joins the fray and is part of their society, he and Nari kind of strike up a friendship, which is a bit of a tricky one because um, neither of them are particularly impressed by the other at first. But over time, it develops and it becomes a little bit more than a friendship as the series goes on as well. So I really enjoyed um, each of these characters. Dara, Ali and Nari are all really, really interesting in their own way. And they all have their own kind of side stories to follow. And although there is a love triangle situation in this book, which I don't love, um, I do think as the series goes on, that kind of irons itself out nicely. And you start to see that the books later on, like the second one and the third one, really go into a really political, um, wider world kind of ramifications of all the actions in book one. And I will say that this series has some of the most twisty, turny plot ever. So you can't anticipate where anything is going. It really does have so many surprises along the way. The second one in particular, I didn't necessarily see Dara's story coming in that story. The twists and turns in this story and series are just fascinating. And I think the ending of book one is super dramatic. And then book two starts off with this whole new kind of area of the world being unlocked and there's a reason why um, because some of our characters have spread out into these other parts and these characters are just forced into roles that they never thought they would end up playing and I never thought they would be a part of so it was really interesting to see these characters who I thought I knew fairly well in book number one then be changed and put into a situation that completely remoulded who they are and gave them a lot to think about and a lot to question and a lot to kind of unpack and uncover as the story goes on. It also widely expands the world out. So you start seeing other regions, other parts of the world, um, a lot further afield, which was really nice to get a vibe on. And I think Nari in general is probably my favourite of the characters, but she is also the one who is most often in Devabad. So we sort of 
see her point of view in Devabad um, throughout all of the series. And then we see the other characters kind of start to pick up different plot points and different um, parts of the kingdom and the world, which all factor in later on as well. I do think the magic of this world is just fun. It's such a magical world. It is the world of flying carpets. It is the world of genies. It is the world of being able to conjure up fire magic all over the place. Um, water magic also comes into it later on from some of the ancient beasts of this world. There are so many ancient like creatures, mythologies that are being pulled on for the author of this book. Um, they've really drawn on lots of different ideas and pulled them in together to make such a magically diverse and magically crazy world. And I really love books that are super high intensity on the magic. And this is definitely a high fantasy with so much magic packed in. I really, really enjoy seeing all of the magical acts that happen. There are potions, there are all sorts of um, magical items that can bind people and bind genies, like rings and artifacts and bits of them. It's all very kind of crazy and out there, but it also it, it somehow works, even though so many of these things don't happen on our day to day, I could believe them because I think the characters and the world is so rich and so well written that the whole way through I was just really, really enjoying seeing where everything was going to go next. And you do keep guessing right until book number three, where things finally start to be kind of unpacked and you start to see where the ending is going. And I really enjoyed all of the books in this series. I think I gave all of them four or five stars. So I really, really enjoyed this series as a whole. And I really recommend it. If you guys haven't heard of it or haven't picked it up, then I would certainly say it's worth giving a try. And I would love to hear your thoughts if you have read it. It has been out for a little while now. I think book three came out last year or the year before. So it's been out for a while. And yeah, I only just finished it, but I really, really loved it. And I'd love to hear what you guys think as well of this series. And I'm super intrigued about what this author is going to do next. And I will definitely be checking out whatever it is because honestly, I really enjoyed this series as a whole. And I think so many of you will as well. Let me know your thoughts below. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye guys. Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book. Then come back and chat with me again.